We are so thankful for everyone who was brave enough to share their experience, to talk loudly and boldly about the wrongs and the harms that YWAM has and continues to perpetrate, not only to the people and the countries that they are sending waves of young people into, but also to these young people who are going into these places and experiencing trauma while also creating trauma for others. It's the continuing ability to mold people who have been so sheltered. Like Daniel DL said, like so sheltered that they're either there because they're like true believers or they've been sent there because they're a problem. And so it's funny because like mixing those populations is such a mind fuck for it's everyone not great. Involved. It's not a great, it's like half of the people there are kids who their parents want to fix them. Why am I just gonna like fix their mm -hmm. like rebel child and the <laughs> other half are people who've never like seen a drug in their life, you know, who've never heard of drugs. <laughs> just like, yeah, uh, homeschool horse, horse girls represent. It's a really weird, and toxic too, honestly, mm -hmm. that happens. And then they're led by 18, 19, 20 year olds who are on fire for God and think that they have all the answers, that God is speaking through them and right. that they have the truth for your life. And let me tell you right now, nobody has the truth for your life except for you, ever. That's right, so, that's right, 100%. Amen. Yeah, that's that's what I gotta say. So while we go down YWAM memory lane here with these people, like know that all of these people are out they're out of the cult. That's why they're listening to Holy Ghosting. That's why they're ghosties. We went through some shit in our days, but like, thank the Lord for therapy and for community and that we can all process this trauma together.